Hey everyone, so with Season of the Witch, for all three of the strand subclasses on each character, we got brand new aspects and they range from incredibly fun to utterly broken. And either way, they are very transformative and they're making PvE very fun by allowing new unique builds and gameplay styles. And this really got me thinking, like this is, I think very healthy for the game as long as they're balanced. Like you can see Weave Walker is disabled, there will definitely be some retooling and rebalancing there, but this is super healthy. And I think like a very core part of the 3.0 system in general, allowing these additional aspects to transform your subclasses and supers in a way to make the game feel more fresh. And I was thinking about this, all of the 3.0s are awesome, all of the light subclasses. The strand subclasses are really awesome, but I think the most stagnant kind of ability type right now and subclasses are gonna be stasis. And I was kind of thinking about this out loud on Twitter and, and tweeting about it, and a lot of people agree. And so I wanna take all of the feedback that I saw and really consolidate it into one small package to talk about. And maybe someone at Bungie will see this um, and just kind of talk about why we feel stasis has been so far left behind or feels like it's been left behind. Um, I do wanna note that this is gonna be almost entirely for like PVE and really more difficult PVE content. You can run anything in patrols, you can run anything in strikes, that's fine. Um, this is more pertaining to like high end, like master raids or GMs, things like that. And there's obvious exceptions, but we're not really gonna be talking about PVP uh, because it's hard to balance something like stasis and PVP as we have seen over the last three years. And I would even argue like Shade Binder um, here is pretty good in PVP in, in some instances at least. But I feel like the stasis subclasses have really fallen behind in PVE content for three main reasons. Uh, and I wanna go ahead and talk about those three main reasons. So the first one is just gonna be a lack of artifact mods. So for the last several seasons, we haven't really had anything modifying stasis at all or in very unique ways. So like this season, we have elemental orbs for solar arc void, which gives you more incentives to use those subclasses in unique ways. Uh, you had last season, you had like tangle modifications for strand. Uh, you had all of like the arc amplification mods last season as well. Um, every season we generally have like a couple of these subclasses that are buffed, but it's been quite a while since we've had anything major happen to Stasis. And so I think really we're, we're well overdue for some pretty interesting Stasis artifact mods just to make them feel a little bit more powerful for a relatively short amount of time, a couple of months, right? Just a season. Um, that's probably the smallest one, but I think it could go a long way to make these subclasses interesting. The other two problems are gonna be more stasis subclass specific. So we can go ahead and jump into those. The second one is going to be kind of aspects and the difference of aspects in stasis versus other subclasses and kind of the relationship between aspects, aspects and fragments. So in stasis, there are some pretty cool aspects. Bleak Watcher, you get, a, get to spawn a turret. That's kind of cool. Um, you have the Titan stasis uppercut. You have Shattered Eye for Hunter that kind of transform the way that you play add unique animations and are really cool. And I would say, you know, these are the sorts of things that are very successful in other subclass types as well. Um, so those are cool, but in stasis, you have a lot of these aspects. I mean, every subclass has four aspects. That's quite a lot. That's more than most, if not all of the light ones, I believe. Um, but a lot of them are just kind of fragment level. They shouldn't really be aspects. So uh, for instance, Freezing a target creates a stasis shard around the frozen target. Um, and that actually really plays into something even more problematic or kind of like a, deepens this problem. So stasis shards, all of the other subclasses have a pretty easy way to spawn their corresponding like subclass thing. So for instance, if we go to solar, um, Defeating Scorched Targets grants melee energy and creates a Fire Sprite. Something that is very similar to that stasis aspect we just saw, but it's a fragment instead. And you don't have to waste one of two aspect slots. You get to customize your subclass with one of four or more fragment slots. Um, if we look at something like Strand, I mean, Strand makes, uh, <laughs> just, it just makes Tangles. Um, and so uh, that's just, or uh, Threadlings. Um, and so that's kind of those. That's kind of what those do. Um, I don't even know what the void ones are called. 
uh, and I don't even know if I have any equipped, but um, defeating volatile targets creates a void breach. So very easy way to get to some ability energy there. And then um, I'm not sure if there's any more, but yeah, defeating suppressed targets creates a void breach. And so you can see all of these other subclasses have ways to spawn these subclass specific, I don't even know what you call them, fragment things. Um, orb of light equivalents on the ground <laughs> and that you can pick up and they give you ability energy they play into some builds in some cases you know i think there were times where they gave you armor charges maybe there was a mod that did that i think um and so like they have this uh, this synergy at a base level starting from fragments or at least the option to enable that where stasis just doesn't and you have to waste an aspect to do it and by wasting an aspect to just make stasis shards now you're missing out on a, the more interesting aspects you, you can't use them that really transform your gameplay um i can either choose to uh freeze a lot of things or make stasis shards but very rarely can i do both and if i do that it really neuters the more unique aspects of the of the gameplay i personally feel like and so um, that's gonna be the second criticism. I mean, that's, I showed Warlock as an example there, but if I like flip over to Titan, for instance, um, it's the same thing. Uh, I, I mean, cause all the fragments are shared, but for instance, um, you need to run the uh, Tectonic Harvest. Shattering a Stasis Crystal creates a Stasis Shard. And that's also a lot harder, it's a lot harder to generate and then destroy a Stasis Crystal than to kill a Scorched Target. When there are weapons that scorch things, all of your abilities scorch things, but there are very specific things, like your grenade makes stasis crystals. And maybe if you have like a uh, headstone or something, you know, it's, it's a little bit more restrictive of a use case in addition to already being restricted to all only your aspect slot. So I think that hurts it a lot too. Uh, the third one's gonna be the variety of the supers. And maybe this isn't a popular opinion, but I think for the most part, the stasis supers are among the most boring and the least useful in PVE. So like Glacial Quake doesn't really do much that, I mean, it's just a it's just a Titan super, you know what I mean? I'm, there, there have been cases where it's done like a ton of damage, but it doesn't feel very unique to use. Yeah, I think right now it's not necessarily crazy in terms of total DPS or anything. It's just like a normal, super and i would i don't know if it's too much to ask to see like an additional super or like super variations but i think that is the level of thing that stasis really needs at this point um for you know titan silence and squall why would you ever use that in pve uh, you wouldn't i mean that's very much a pvp super uh but that's also kind of the the point of this video is hunter stasis deserves to be usable in pve as well you know um, Shadebinders definitely had its uses in PvE uh, in terms of Winter's Wrath. I mean, it was really good for farming uh, Spire of the Watcher, for instance. Um, it does decent damage, uh, but I feel like it's just missing a little bit of the utility. Like, why would I ever use this over, uh, you know, the Strand Super that does an insane amount of damage or well, which makes you unkillable or, you know, anything else? <laughs> I feel like this is one of the last uh supers i would pick for pve and so i mean all three of the supers seem to be m more pvp focused but i feel like stasis should have an adequate amount of utility in pve as well and it's really fallen behind and i would love to see some updates and changes to help spruce it up a little bit um and so I just, yeah, I know this was kind of a rambly video, but those are the, the three main points that I think could really help stasis. I know a lot of people are like, oh, but you have to own Beyond Light. Um, you have to own Lightfall for Strand and it still feels amazing and they still do artifact mods for that. Uh, also, I, I'm of the belief we're like three years past Beyond Light, just like make it free. There's, I don't know. I don't know how much money Bungie's realistically still making off of Beyond Light, uh, but uh, in all of my endless uh, naivety, uh, I, they should make it free, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I just think Strand deserves a little bit more, and I would love to see Bungie mess around with it. Uh, the exotics have been cool for it, but I mean, the exotics can only modify Strand so much. 
Um, and so if the base is better, then the exotics will play better too. And I would just really love to see better interactions there. So let me know what you think. Uh, do you think I'm dumb? Do you think Stasis is fine? Or how would you like to see it changed in more PVE? Uh, applications or environments or how would you like to see the abilities tuned let me know down below thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did make sure to leave a like rating and share it with your friends and i'll see you guys very soon